I just happened to park next to a canyon, which, you know, it's a little bit taller off the ground at the back, but the front is roughly the same height. You definitely get much more hood slope on the Honda, which means you'll have more visibility off of the hood. But overall, they're about the same size vehicle. The cab on the Honda definitely looks like it's a little bit longer, but I think that's more of an illusion. The interior space is probably about the same. So you are looking at the 2018 Honda Ridgeline RTLE. This is their premium equipped model comes with pretty much every conceivable feature you can get on one of these. Let's take a look at the vehicle from the outside, some of the things we like. This vehicle rides on 245 60 18s, 18-inch 18 aluminum wheel, LED headlights, LED signal that goes around it, halogen high beams, halogen fog lights, and incandescent turn signals. I would really like to see Honda move completely away from halogen and incandescent and move to LEDs for all their lightings. Right now, the headlights are the only LED option you have. As you can see, it has the front corner parking sensors. Now, the bed in the Ridgeline is arguably the most resourceful and useful bed I've ever seen on any vehicle. A couple things that I did wish it had. First of all, the tailgate is very heavy, and I'll explain to you why in a second. But the tailgate drops down. I wish they had some type of a slow opening mechanism for it, which they don't. Secondly, you have this really nice width here. It's over four feet wide, so you can put a full sheet of plywood or whatever you need in the back. The height of the side rails aren't that tall either, so it's easy to reach over. What's also nice is that you can flip this piece up here, and you have this really nice storage area, kind of a trunk in the back that is sealed from the weather, and at the same time gives you a ton of space. I'm talking about a lot of space. It really is a good size. I'd have to say it's about 20 inches deep and probably about four feet wide. So you have a lot of really good cargo space here. So back to the tailgate. We flip the tailgate up, but what's unique about this one is that it's double hinged. So you can open it up like a door. And why this comes in handy is if you're tailgating or if you're in that type of scenario, you can simply walk right up to the back, pop the back, and if you have a cooler or something in here you need access to, it's very, very quick and easy to access. Behind here you have a 110 or 115 outlet, so you can plug in a radio, a fan, whatever you might want to plug in right here. But one of the really, really cool features of this vehicle is that it actually has bed speakers, and you can control them from the system up front. You simply turn on the bed speaker mode, and you have outdoor, outside speakers that play in the bed area. Again, another great feature for tailgating or if you're going out to the beach and whatnot. So moving along to the interior of the Ridgeline, you have all your windows and door lock controls here, your memory seats right here, two settings, as well as your fuel door release right here, which this is a little different. Most of the time you'll see it in this area, but they moved it on the door. Plenty of storage here. You got a little change pocket here, you have a pocket here, you have a pocket here, and you have a pocket here. Really good about putting storage options in the door. Your power seats, again, very traditional Honda, forward, back, up and down, tilt, and then your lumbar support. Here's many of your safety controls, parking assist, your lane guidance, collision control, traction control, your cargo light from the back, as well as your 115 volt AC adapter. This is your econ mode. When in econ mode, you will noticeably feel the vehicle accelerate slower. It'll feel more sluggish, but at the same time, it's designed to give you better overall fuel economy when you're driving. So many people just keep econ mode on and they turn it off whenever they have to get onto an expressway or an interstate. Power mirror control. All your headlight controls are right here. You have your little infotainment center up front along with your analog gauges, RPMs, speed is digital, and then your engine temperature and your fuel gauge. Has a very nice steering wheel, but it is a little busy, so it has a lot of options on the steering wheel, especially when it comes to your cruise control settings with the adaptive cruise control and the collision avoidance and your lane keeping. You're going to want to know what these buttons do and how they function. Again, you have your full automatic climate control for both driver and passenger. You also have a really, really vibrant touchscreen display up here. Now, one of the differences between 
this touchscreen display and many other vehicles is they absolutely have eliminated all knobs. You have no knob up here to adjust anything. And I really wish specifically for the volume they would have kept a rotary knob because I think there's many circumstances when you may not be looking at your radio where you want to adjust the volume. Let's say when you're pulling up to a drive-through or a tell or something like that. All soft touch materials, everything is really, really, really built well from a tolerance perspective. As you can see, there's really no gaps between any of the areas that things meet together. And that, again, is very traditional to Honda, Toyota, Nissan, really, really making switches and buttons look flush, making them look really clean. Down here, you'll have your power ports for USB, as well as your 12-volt cigarette lighter plug. You have a pocket here, sunglasses, whatever might fit there. You have your drink holders, and then you have this really nice sliding center console that goes relatively deep and has a really cool looking finish to it, almost like a gunmetal finish. Passenger seat. One thing that's really nice is how comfortable these seats are. The fact that they have armrests. They're true captain's chairs as opposed to simply using your center console for an armrest. And that's nice because it gives you room to put things on your center console. If you're a woman, you can put your purse there. If you're a man, you can put you know, a laptop or something you might need quick access to right here. Does have a sunroof. Sunglass holder up here. Of course, all your lights. Let's take a quick look at the rear seat. So one thing that's really nice is on the door, you're gonna get a cup holder right here on the door, and that is very convenient, plus a place to put your phone. Little pocket right here. You don't have any lower pockets on the door, so there's no storage down in this section. But the seats do flip completely up, and it gives you this really nice flat storage area on the bottom if you need to carry, let's say, a dog kennel or any like big box. Let's say you buy a new TV or something and you want to put it inside the vehicle. Leg room. You know, leg room is going to be arguable on this one because it's going to give you about the same leg room as you might get in like a Tacoma or a Canyon or a midsize truck. Um, it's definitely not what I would consider super spacious, but it's more than enough for children. It's more than enough for, you know, adults that may be under six feet tall. Down here again, you have more connections for USB to charge your phones and other pockets. And of course, pockets in the back seat. But to give you a good idea of how wide this vehicle is, take a look at this little flip down armrest in the center. It is incredibly wide. You have a lot of width here that you may not have in other pickup trucks, and it takes great advantage. You can easily fit three passengers across the back seat here. Has a power sliding rear window, and it has nice tall headrests here, as well as one right here that slides up for anybody who might be sitting in the center. Overall, a very well laid out interior. So what I wanted to show you guys real quick is the truck bed radio feature. So once the radio is on, you go to your home screen, turn on truck bed audio, and now you have the ability to play audio from the truck bed. The speakers are inside the vehicle, will be shut off, and all you're going to get is the audio from outside of the vehicle. So if I turn it on, I don't know if you can hear it. Isn't that cool? And the speakers, I think, are hidden in the walls right here because you can feel it, but it's really loud from the outside of the vehicle. And it sounds like the speakers are all throughout this area. But that is really cool, especially for those people tailgating or going to the beach, like I said. Overall, guys, I've been really impressed with what the Ridgeline offers. If you're looking for a pure half-ton or three-quarter ton up truck, this may not be the truck for you. But if you're looking for a very, very good blend of half-ton and mid-size truck capabilities, but in more of a sport utility package on a unibody frame, which is going to give you a much, much smoother, more car and SUV-like ride, especially in terms of handling and performance, this is absolutely a vehicle you should look at. I highly recommend that if you're in that mid-sized truck market, you include the Ridgeline as one of the vehicles you take a closer look at. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again soon.